peace. A cartoon style phone, cubed diced foam, carrying handle, and two sachet silica gel desiccant. You can use it for eye pieces, keep them dry. And the body of the case is lined with foam also. Soft, everything is soft. How many layers of foam it has? Look, one big chunky layer of foam. Elegant. Now let's put the things that I want to put here. Okay, I'm going to put the very lightweight eyepieces which are really good at their class. So I will start with this uh, Vixen HR 2.4 millimeter. Then I will continue it to the um, this uh, TMB Planetary 2.5 millimeter. Then I go to the 3.2 uh, TMB Planetary. And uh, I will continue to build up this IP set with the best in this class. So I will not just go for whatever is available, I'll just go for the best that I can afford and the lightweight in the sense of being usable. So let's see how we can do it. So this is the Wixen one, it comes in its own bolt case. Um, both case is useful in this case when you want to use it like that, but I want to put it in the case, so I'll remove it from the bolt case and transfer it to the uh, actual thing. This costs around 250 pounds, so it's quite expensive eyepiece. And surprise, surprise, I don't think it's any better than this one, <laughs> to be honest. And this one has a better field of view, wider. So, you'll learn. quite chunky of course and uh, I like this uh, die fry at the end nice uh, darkening effect increases the contrast excludes the stray light so I wonder should I put it like this uh, I have a good experience placing the eyepieces like that uh, across so I will just go like that so the next one is this uh, plan TMB planetary and that is a 2.5 millimeter. Really good. Uh, I can compare it with any other good eyepieces, especially under Venus and uh, uh, Mercury. That was brilliant. I could push it to the highest magnification with that eyepiece. So TMB planetary will be here. Then we come to this uh, TMB Planetary 2.2 millimeter. All very useful in their own. And I feel they're really in par with the most, more expensive eyepieces that may cost 10 times more than them. Then you will be surprised to know that uh, this uh, very cheap uh, orthoscopic 4.8 millimeter is really good really enjoyed using this so I'm putting it here also and then succession of the increasing of the uh, uh, focal length and reduction in the power of magnification of the eyepiece I'm going like that so the next one will be a 5 millimeter and the next one for me will be this 5 millimeter Wixen SLV, really sharp, especially on the Saturn, 5mm, just 
so I'm going to enjoy this knife. It's really good eye really eye eye lens, and nothing better than this. Uh, it punches above his weight, but the only problem is that it's like a puzzle extended. So field of view is 52 degrees better than a puzzle, but does not as wide a, as wide as a. Um, um, one of these or oh, a 70 degree eyepiece so that's 5 millimeter. now I can put a 6 millimeter one there then I come to a 6 millimeter Wixen I've SLV eyepiece and this is really good on par with the 5 millimeter one probably even better because uh, it has less magnification in a sense if you have a tracking uh, tripod mount, that really is good. So 50 degrees field of view, 6 millimeter. So I will place this here. Then we come to a 7 millimeter um, TMB planetary, a really good eyepiece, really versatile. At the size of the eye guard, you can rise it. It has also rubber, and you can rise it easily or push it down. Also, the uh, uh, for excluding the light, you can actually rise the eye guard. Very versatile. 22 pounds from new, and really works. I can tell the only thing which is, which is better than this is a uh, is a Nagler 7mm in that range there is nothing better than this so far as I have found so 7mm goes there here I have a Starguider 8mm ED eyepiece which nicely should go here beautiful color coded with a gold margin big eye lens and I think this is around 62 degrees field of view quite chunky heavy and nice field to stop and I like it a very value good value for money um, new you can buy it for 42 43 pound uh, used with anything between 25 to 35 so the 8 millimeter star guide ED comes here then we come to 9 millimeter and um, TMB planetary which again goes here Very able capital eyepiece. Let me show you the islands. Quite large and well designed and built. Mechanically superb and optically also. So nine millimeter goes here. Okay, I've decided to remove this um, um, orthoscopic eyepiece from here, just for the sake of you know space also that it doesn't exactly match with the others autoscopies I can make a case just for those autoscopic eyepieces so I'll remove that and everything comes one row one how one part upper so have no more space here okay I've decided between the 7 TMB and the 8 um, star guide I put my 7.5 millimeter Takahashi LE which is a nice eyepiece and let's see how it goes here yeah nice yeah good so that goes there I want to have good quality at the same time lightweight then I will have the 9 12 and 12 and a half millimeter Takahashi LE so let me just take this out yeah so Takashi LE comes here, 12 and a half millimeter. This way I will be able to use it. When it is in the box, practically I tend not to use them. And 
here in this row, I'll bring the 18mm Takahashi LE eyepiece, which is a nice, good eyepiece. Bigger field of view than a orthoscopic. So, so far we have here 12 eyepieces, so I have a few more spaces here. Let me see what can I put there. Then we come to a big jump from the 18 millimeter we come to the 26 millimeter that's a plus old 26 millimeter celestron silver top the legendary is in the class of the eyepieces like a uh, uh, more scientific uh, RKA really good uh, eyepiece as you can see and other places here then from 25 to 20, I mean, tw this is 26, sorry, I should say, correct myself. From 26, I don't have any eyepiece that actually fits in the one and a half, uh, one and a quarter inch eyepiece holder. Maybe I have, but they're not very good, or I don't, I have too many of the 26 millimeters. So, uh, the next one for me, which is really useful and good, is the this Teleview 40 millimeter plus of the easiest to look through, easiest for astrophotography. Uh, GG scoping for holding a camera in front of an eyepiece. Really forgiving and it's very sharp, I must say. It's one of the best eyepieces I've ever seen for planetary or wide field view. So for me, this 40 millimeter comes here. And, or oh, probably I should put it like this against the others. So now we make this space for the eyepieces and see how they will be. So far, so good. I'll just take a picture before making a space. And how I make a space? Uh, practically plucking the foam. They're connected with just one tiny bit. And then I will press them against it so they will hold down. I will show you the result. So what I'm doing is just pressing and separating these connections. These tiny, tiny bits here. This tiny. And I press them down. So what I'm doing, I just uh, cut the, this connection, these tiny bits here, press them down, break them down, and then every time if I want to change the eyepiece or, you know, if I don't want to have that eyepiece here, I can just pull them up. At the moment, that's, that's fine. And the eyepiece goes here and stays there with the number facing upward. So I do for the rest of them also the same. Now the 5mm also snugly has been fitted there. Now we go to the 6, 7 and the rest. 6mm is also snugly fit. Now we go over the 7. Now the 7.5mm Takashi. Such a tiny space it can fit. 4 by 2 uh, diced cubes. So now if we go for the 8mm ED, 4mm ED is here, as you can see, and uh, now fits a snug, nice, so I'll put the size upward, you can see the focal length. So, so far we have placed 8 of the eyepieces, let's go and do the rest of them. The 9mm also slightly fits. I've decided to put a 40mm in this line with this bigger one. So Takahashi 18 and 12 and a half goes with the 26mm Celestron in this space. I think that's a better use of the space. So let's do it here. 12mm also has gone there. Now we go for the 40mm which very nicely actually can fit here. Now this is the space for the um, Teleview 40mm eyepiece. This kind of uh, cap they make, they say, is made for one and a quarter and two inch eyepiece. It's a bit weird, and uh, um, I see a lot of people just replace it with it. I guess lust is loose most of the times. So people replace it with uh, those yellow caps that uh, somebody is selling them everywhere in the eBay even. So now this is placed. I'll go for the 26 millimeter, 12 and a half millimeter, and 18 millimeter. Right. 
Look, I've decided to put an 18 millimeter here and the rest here. So let's do this. It's not in a snug. Now we put the 26 millimeter here. Now this 26 millimeter also sitting in this place. And then 12 and a half millimeter to cash. Okay, 12 and a half millimeters to cash. You went there and now. You can just say that this eyepiece case is almost done. I have two more spaces here, I'm going to fill it with something else later. Okay, now the eyepiece case is ready. I'm going to close it and just put this back, the second, and also the belt. Now we are going to yeah, it's ready to be used easily without the need to open and close the box every time I want to use it. Like okay, my purpose of making this box of the this case of a eyepieces was to have eyepieces that are in weight equal to each other, not very far. So the telescope that I'm going to use with uh, will be not be out of balance every time I change the eyepiece. So that's for this reason.